quite a bit to uh, chew this morning. But let's uh, step into the consumer's market, taking that a little bit away from the, what you've seen in the headlines this week. And quite, there are quite a bit to uh, talk about from the new handshake across the desert between Nigeria and Niger Republic, uh, building a new refinery and petrochemical facility pipeline uh, in one of the small towns in Katsina State, bordering Niger Republic. This new deal, uh, of which we have no exact amount of what that will cost, according to the interview we had here on Channel's Business Morning two days ago with the group executive director in charge of uh, refinery and downstream infrastructure at the NNP, at the Minister of, uh, Minister of Petroleum uh, Resources. Well, but of course, we want to talk a little bit about that as well as we look into the current consumer prices within the space. Yesterday, the news is already out that the prices of uh, prices of uh, fruits are beginning to climb from watermelon to cucumber to uh, oranges and what have you. Because folks now want more healthy foods and drinks uh, than they should saw. Because of that, prices of those commodities are climbing. Uh, so if you are joining me on the health line, uh, watching my weight and my heart and everything else, all the internal organs, then we are the ones pushing prices of these uh, uh, fruits higher. But let's get a team to away from uh, financial derivatives to bring this to uh, to bear on the street for us. Good morning. Good morning. Are you in, on the health side? <laughs> yes. Yes, we're all on the health side. So we're all guilty of the prices of um, watermelon. I learned uh, that this, the big size is now about 700, 900 mm -hmm. on, on the street. Mm -hmm. So prices are climbing. Yes, yes. So it's the health um, consciousness, like you said, and it's also it could also be the fact of the headsman crisis, which, like I said before, is affecting supply. And then it could also be because we are slowly approaching a harvest season. The planting season is um, coming to an end gradually. So we're approaching a harvest season where there's like a huge pump of these commodities. What well, that that should um, reduce prices, not increase them, but it's the health consciousness and the headsman crisis, I believe. Yeah, it, because uh, the entire, some of these uh, come all the way from the north. Yes. Uh, so if uh, transportation yes. and yes. some of the uh, a number of farmers are scared of, mm -hmm. of, of, of tilling the soil yes. uh, and things like that, yes. then we begin to see the attendant uh, factor. And again, we are all eating more fruit these days, yes. uh, whether the one that you uh, put together as a drink. Exactly, as a shake. Or yes, something. as a shake, as yes. you call it. Uh, against uh, tea and coffee. But some of us still doing the two together, uh, one way or the other. Uh, let's uh, get to what is burning this morning. Uh, that's just one of them. We just got my attention. I think we should just let you know. Okay. Take us through this. Okay, um, so the first one is the price. Brent prices are up by like 0.9%. This is because um, U.S. stockpiles um, declined. And then the second is the CBN proposing to incentivize lending process. In Nigeria and then like you mentioned earlier Republic of Niger and Nigeria have signed a deal for refinery projects and um, we also have the prices of some packaged goods up in June things like seasoning cubes and spaghetti uh, the diesel prices is climbing yes. as well and that no, doesn't look down. like good news to me no they have actually average diesel prices down according to the MBS about 205 um, Naira per liter. I'm the one buying. So, <laughs> 204 is yeah. still on the upside. Well, the claim is down, so we should celebrate the small victories. It's, it's down marginally, and that is national, and that is in July. So, if you're buying at a higher price now, that is the price for July. This they're reporting is for June. So, yeah. Mm. But a bit of a backward looking information. But, yeah, but, exactly. but what this news on, of this handshake? between Niger and, and Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one thing that uh, uh, will likely be, you folks believe this will be about $2 billion in terms of size, yes, but again, yes. the attendant uh, impact of it on uh, fuel, perennial fuel shortage, import dependence, mm -hmm. pipeline management, pipeline vandalization, whatever, uh, is what interests me and should interest everyone. Yes, yeah, so the project, the agreement is for a refinery, a new refinery in Katsina State, and also a proposed um, hydrocarbon pipeline between Niger and Katsina, where the 
refinery will be built. And the capacity that we that we've read about is about 150,000 barrels per day. And this combined with um, other modular refineries that are springing up across Nigeria, there's the Dangote refinery that is proposed to have a capacity of over 500,000 barrels per day. And so this is all these are projected in like the next two years, 2020. So by 2020, we could have Nigeria as a refinery hub, which is good and is in line with um, global trends. You already have refinery hubs across the world. And this is an economics. This is good for our import bill. It would reduce our dependence on importing refined petroleum. It was music to my ears when I when I heard that we, we were trying to do that. Again, with the explanations given by the uh, engineer, Suleiman, who is mm -hmm. the uh, group executive director at the Ministry of uh, Petroleum Resources mm -hmm. about the distance of the planned refinery in mm -hmm. the northern part the, of Katsina State, the distance to Niger, mm -hmm. where the oil field, where the crude is coming from, mm -hmm. he said the, the, the distance is very short, mm -hmm. and that reduces the cost of moving yeah. uh, or the... Uh, 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 the, the crude yeah. to, to the location, to the location of and it. then if you put it there, there's, there's a refinery already in, in Kajina, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and there's going to be a second one uh, in, in Katsina State, maybe within two years. So if we put this to at optimal use, we're looking at uh, a major push. To, uh, to it, we're looking at major um, refined petroleum products in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and like I said, there's the Dangote refinery. There are other modular refineries springing up across Nigeria. So we are slowly becoming a refinery hub. Which I, is, I, I like this story again for another reason, mm -hmm. because the number of petrol tankers coming mm -hmm. to Lagos, where I work and live mm -hmm. and, and where, uh, would reduce a little bit again. Their footprints yes, yes. Will, will, will reduce yes. if there's a refinery mm -hmm. all the way in Katsina State. Mm -hmm. So a number of petrol tankers mm -hmm. uh, that usually head to either Lagos mm -hmm. or to Ore mm -hmm. or worry to okay. load yeah. fuel will just head north mm -hmm. yeah. instead Which... of coming south. Well, you yes. you are you are on the good side of that, but the people <laughs> in the north will not agree. But yes, it's good news. No, we've got to share this. Yeah, we need refineries. Sure. We need to spread sure. this economic sure. Right. Again, there are attendant mm -hmm. benefits to, to of setting a refinery. Mm -hmm. You and I yes, know that there will be small businesses in and around the refineries, isn't it? Would food, ven food vendors, from this housing, that would benefit yeah, real from estate, and all. So yeah. it's, it's a little bit. A refinery is like a city on its own with exactly. small towns, whatever around. around. Everybody trying to, yeah. to to benefit, creating mm -hmm. jobs at the local level level yeah, as exactly. well. The yeah. workers at the refinery would also have the new accommodations and things like that. So, I think we can spread out if we have 10,000, 20,000, 40,000 uh, haulage tankers uh, in Nigeria, we should mm, be able to spread them out. States, Some in yes. Potakos, Lagos. Yeah. So, and of good. course, it's good for our revenue and everything. Yes. That is good for revenue yes. as well. Uh, Katsina State will start making more money. Mm. Uh, we need to keep an eye on that state up north. What else is making news this morning? I'm interested in the oil prices. Uh, are we seeing a bit of, a, of uh, ebbing in the uh, uh, trade war between well, we saw the meeting with Trump and, and Juncker, uh, mm. the EC chief yesterday, and it looks like President Trump was a little bit um, cordial. And yes, but again, President Trump is very unpredictable. So we've heard in the last few days about him proposing um, tariffs on automobiles. So it's like every day is a new thing. So we don't really know the direction. Tomorrow he can come out with another t slapping another tariff on another yeah, major EU. product. Mm. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's not. Yes, it seems that EU and the US are a bit cordial with themselves. Yesterday was a good day. Yes, but we don't know about tomorrow. About today. So, uh, in fact, we don't today. even know about today. Exactly. It's still early days. It's still early morning <laughs> hours. What time is it by now in New York? Uh, I think it's still about uh, uh, 5 o'clock in the... In Washington, it's about 4 or 5 in the morning. Mm. So we don't know so what happens when the exactly president wakes up. Don't wake up the president yet. <laughs> uh, I hope he's not watching. Uh, at least, I hope he's not listening. And uh, So let's wait for his... Uh, yeah. Uh, so tweet see. this uh, a Thursday and see what, <laughs> what happens. Uh, maybe that will be a shocker to Junker as he jets back to <laughs> Brussels and says, hey, I thought I just left the White House yesterday. Well, what happened overnight? But, but that's the story. But again, we are enjoying this price rally mm, uh, in the oil sector. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about these, um, uh, some of the issues around the headwinds knocking the agro products, wheat, mm. cocoa. Mm -hmm. It looks like this hot season yes. is 
Amazing. moving around the world and is causing very serious damage to mm. agro products. Mm -hmm, Wheat, cocoa, cocoa, and the um, rest. Yes, yes. So and barley, the rest of corn. the... Yes, and yes, corn. Yes. yes, so we have the heat wave, like you said. It's really affecting supply. And because these are import commodities, supply is affected, prices go up, and our import bill goes up. So it's really going to tell on our import bill. That, that's the numbers I'm looking at there on, on, on the screen in terms of uh, which is up by almost 1.57% uh, to about $5.18 per bushel. Mm -hmm. That's a weak global supply. Uh, yes, again. Corn is also up 0.61%. Mm -hmm. Unfavorable weather conditions. So again, it's the weather conditions that is affecting the global supply of these Commodities Sugar prices is also up. I mm -hmm. can't see much of good news on the screen as I'm looking at this <laughs> exactly. agri global agri commodities, with the exception even cocoa. cocoa is down. Uh, the weather conditions. Mm. Ah, okay, okay, okay. It looks like uh, weather, weather, weather mm -hmm. conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to do something with the weather, man. <laughs> uh, then you have weak global supply, supply, which is also a lot weather. about these uh, very strong fire and uh, hot uh, wave. Yeah, yeah. hot wave. Yeah. And then flooding in a few uh, areas as well. Yeah, so weather is not really good for these products. And Climate change. Exactly. Global warming, if you want. Yes. So. It's a little bit warm in the studios <laughs> here as well. It's so called global warming. <laughs> uh, warming into agri prices. So when all this begins to happen outside, I shouldn't be surprised when we're looking at our food sub index over the next one, two months. Yes, and, yes, and like we said, we are projecting that inflation is going to increase soon. So all of this would play out in inflation numbers, maybe for July, maybe for August. We don't know yet, but definitely, yes. This goes all the way to our import bill, yes, one way or the other. Definitely. If there is no supply, then something will just have to happen. Yeah, Someone has got to pay. Our import bill, our export revenue. So yeah, it plays out into all of this. You, let's manage this handshake. <laughs> uh, just so it doesn't look very nice out there. But of course, let's uh, hold it all up, folks, until uh, we get a bit of a breather from the weather. Be careful what you do as far as the climate change is concerned. Let's reduce our, our footprints of uh, carbon. Uh, let's leave it there for today. Uh, that's the Tank Farm story that you see back on your TV screen. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we come back. You're watching Business Morning. It's Thursday, the 26th of July.